Hello, 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 all you beautiful people out there. How y'all doing? You doing good? Good. If not, then hopefully this video will make you feel good. So today I wanted to make Pokemon fusions inspired by the artist, um... Cher caramels? Caramels? I, I... I know that this name might be based on Undertale's Kara or Kara. If I didn't pronounce it correctly, I am sorry. Please forgive me. This is an artist I've been following on Twitter and Instagram for a while now. They do a lot of different work. They've done some Steven Universe work, they've done some Undertale work, and what really inspired me is their work for Pokemon, specifically the fusions that they've done. So, if you are on Twitter or you're on Instagram or any other social media I can find, I will leave links to their media in the description below. I kept thinking myself when I first saw these fusions, wow, these are really creative and beautiful and I wish I had thought of some of these. I have done Pokemon fusions before, but not in a very long time as you can tell by the cringy art difference. But still, because it's been such a long time, I think this is going to be fun. So, I came up with some fusions I thought I'd share with everyone, and who knows, maybe this will inspire you to do some fusions of your own. Just a disclaimer though, I am not claiming to have done any of these fusions first. Everybody has their interpretation, so if I end up having a similar outcome on an already existing fusion, I am so sorry. Now, before we move on to the actual drawings, I just wanted to give a shout out to an artist, Chow Bunny Arts. They recently restocked their Etsy, and I saw a chance to give you guys some extra content by reacting to this lucky bag that I got. This video is absolutely not sponsored, but I also ended up buying a water type themed pencil pouch for myself. But if anyone's ever interested, they've also got a ghost type pouch. And yes, of course, because I want to support other artists, I will have their Etsy in the link in the description below. And I will also have their link tree in the description below because it'll like branch out to their other media if anyone is ever interested or wants to donate a coffee to them. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm just gonna say, guys, I know their work is good because I've actually bought from them previously before as I had bought in, like, this Togekiss little Frappuccino cup. Also, if you are not interested in this part of the video, then go to this timestamp to absolutely skip it. Anyways. Okay! Hi, Krusty. Thank you for your purchase. Ciao, bunnies. Okay. And it also came with this cute little Taiyaki bunny sticker. And thank you again for the pencil case. I absolutely love water Pokemon, in case I didn't mention in the video. Has Saida, Corsi, Mantine, Wingull. I'm not a big fan of Wingull, but that's okay. Whalmer and Poliwhirl? Yeah, that's definitely Poliwhirl. Oh, and Chincho. I didn't notice the Chincho in between the, uh... Anyways. Psyduck, though, is my favorite Pokemon out of all these, with Horsey is my second favorite. Ah, I love this! Now on to the $15 lucky bag. I really don't want to ruin the squashy tape, though. Ah, no! Ciao, bunnies, I'm sorry, but I gotta do in order for the video to continue. Also, I love the little Pikachu art. It's absolutely adorable. Oh, I should probably do this, though, before anything. Oh, okay, there we go. There's the snag. There was a little piece of tape right here, so I couldn't grab it properly to uh, protect the product products, but... Okay, first pull... Oh, a little sticker sheet with a bunch of new bunnies and different... Let's see, a croissant, carrot cake, um, I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it looks cute. Maybe a fruit salad with a little bit of whipped cream? <laughs> I'm gonna guess a chocolate cake, some little marshmallows, a little roll, a donut, and, well, one of those Japanese crepes, if any of you know what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, so cute. I, I saw a little black string, so... <gasps> oh, it's a little easy! It's a little easy. You get one of everything, so that's okay. Oh my goodness. Personally, my favorite is Glaceon, but you know what? Eevee is adorable, too. Oh, Jolteon! Okay. Oh, and it comes with the shiny side. It's like if the uh, camera wants to focus. Ah, 
shiny and shiny shiny and shiny I don't know if anyone can see the little difference but that's okay and ah it's beyond this is actually my second favorite evolution so this works out perfectly <gasps> Cleffa donut oh my goodness this is adorable and I love this so far oh this is cute it's a salamance with a little cherry I think I'm pretty sure that's a cherry I see like a stem rolling around oh wait no it's a cherry berry from like the actual Pokemon game okay next pull <gasps> Poplio this was actually my favorite low one starter so oh my goodness I am loving this pull so far and next pull oh it's Kyrie from Kingdom Hearts what am I saying I it, it took me a bit because I know she had a Kingdom Hearts um set too I just didn't it, it had to take me a second because you can't really see her uh outfit there we go yeah <laughs> Although you can tell it's Kyrie by the uh, flowers because I'm, I'm pretty sure she has like a flower keyblade. Oh, there's one more thing left and it's Trish from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5. I'm really happy with this poll. Thank you again, Chow Bunnies, and I will be sure to link your stuff in the uh, description below. Thank you very much. Be Yay! <laughs> So this first fusion, I could have gone in a few different directions depending on if I wanted to do the sky or the land form. I originally wanted to choose the land form because, I mean look at it, it's adorable. But as it turned out with the sketch I did originally make it, yeah it didn't work out in my favor. When I did this, it turned into like this weird adorable bird with like a nose instead of a beak and... It, yeah, it just didn't look right to me, so I decided to try it again, but with the sky form. I think that it actually turned out way better than what I had originally been expecting to make. Maybe some people would consider the Shaman Birdo look cute, but it just didn't work for me. So overall, I gave it some curls, I gave it some eyelashes since, well, the sky form seems so masculine compared to the land form. I also decided to keep up with the color scheme of Togekiss, but I also just wanted to keep some bits of Shaman, so I toned down the bright green eyes into something more soft and muted. I even gave it little wings, that way it wasn't just Shaman with Togekiss's color scheme, because, well, you know, it's kind of funny. I posted a close-up shop of this fusion while I'm still working on this video, and apparently I'm a Pokemon furry now. Okay. Alright. Cool. I'm pretty sure in terms of Pokemon design, Gen 4 and Gen 6 are probably my favorite generations, and when I was younger, Togekiss and Shaman were pretty much up there on my favorites list. I was super into the anime back then, and I remember loving the episode where Dawn switched places with that one princess, and seeing Dawn have a Togekiss kind of filled that empty void for me when Misty left the anime. Plus, I mean, come on, who doesn't want a big, happy, cuddly bird in their lives? Speaking of which, Garatina and the Sky Warrior. I watched way more times than I'd like to admit in middle school. I'm old enough to step back now and say, okay, this wasn't as good as I once thought it was, but I think that's just because I was completely blinded by my love for Shaman, and I, I kind of want a Gracidia garden. Just saying. <laughs> This fusion was a lot easier to manage for me, and you know what? I like how it turned out. It's fluffy, the eyes are shiny, and Eevee is just one of those Pokemon that can be molded and shifted into anything. And yeah, I understand, that's by design, blah blah blah. But I guess that's just why Eevee is just a great vessel for not only evolutions, but for Pokemon fusions in general. Hell, you can shift Eevee to look like a mini version of its own evolutions and it'd still look amazing. Honestly, for me it just kinda sucks that Eevee's just become like one of these overrated Pokemon. But it's like, come on! It's just that adorable, leave it alone! 
Okay, and also I know that a lot of people are really into Snom right now. Like, a lot of people. And who knows, maybe this will become the series on my channel, but I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm really into Frost Moth. It's adorable, it's fluffy, and considering I don't like bug type Pokemon all that much, I'd gladly have this Pokemon on my team. There, I said it. Actually, no, I did add it onto my team when I got Sword and Shield, and I named it Angel Dust. Take that as you will. And I'm just gonna say it, adding it to my team was like one of the best things I ever decided to do in that game. But maybe that's just because I'm completely biased towards Ice-type Pokemon. <laughs> like, all Ice-type Pokemon. I don't care if you're a friggin' Glalie. I love you. One time, on Twitter, I had someone ask me what was my favorite ice type. When I said all of them, they kept asking me which was my favorite. I just kept saying, yeah, yes, do not question my decisions. I love every single fucking ice type out there, equally. Like, from all your Sneasels to your Glalies and your Snoms, I love you all and I want to cuddle you, especially friggin' cup chew, even though you got snot coming down your face. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry about this tangent, guys. I'm keeping this in. So... Yeah. Alright, you may now call me out for being a furry at this point of the video. With the newest Pokemon waifu out and about for Sword and Shield, I wanted to take my favorite Alolan form and fuse it with Hatterene. I would have gone with a ghost type like Chandelure or Miss Magius to fuse with her, but it seems that it's already been done and I personally can't think of anything I could do to add a new twist to those Pokemon fusions, so I just went with one that I just hadn't seen yet. I think my favorite part about this fusion is Ninetales' slowing fur being used as an extension for the dress. Unfortunately, the sketch was super messy, so I admit that cleaning it up for the final image would have been a pain in the butt. Some of you might disagree with me when I say this, but I think this might have been my weakest fusion that I had made so far. There was an idea, and there was a concept, but the execution could have been handled better in my opinion. Maybe I'll revisit this someday and try to give it another shot, but for now, what you see is what you get. So, you and I are both going to have to live with it. <laughs> Alright, here's a hot take when it comes to Eldegoss and Cherim. I think that these Pokemon are just fine the way they are. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. The Cotton Afro Pokemon and the generic looking Cherry Blossom Pokemon are just fine. Fine, just fine. And in fact, you know what I think? I think that they are adorable beans and I think people might appreciate them a little more if I combine these two precious beans. I figured this fusion would be a little difficult since they feel like the same Pokemon because they have similar elements to each other, but I wanted to see if I could make it work anyway. Overall, I think I did okay and the Cherry Blossom Afro kinda helped. One of the weirdest things that happened during the development of this sketch was I remember seeing somebody wearing like a cherry blossom afro over the internet and I wanted to reference that so I looked up cherry blossom afro. What do you know, turns out the person I was imagining was Pikachu. I don't know, there was some weird spring distribution where Pikachu was rocking a cherry blossom afro back in 2019 for like a Japan thing. I don't know, I don't keep track of this stuff. Anyways, and you know, I think it worked with Eldegoss. I admit, these designs by themselves are pretty weak. Eldegoss is one of those Pokemon I picked up along the way because I needed a grass type while I was up against Nessa. And since I chose Sobble as my main starter, uh, yeah. I mean, I had a Yamper just in case as my backup, but it was still nice having an Eldegoss for the little time that I used it. Though I do admit this, I did actually enjoy its design when it was first announced. Even if our Lord and Savior Wooloo stole the spotlight from it, it's, it's fine, just fine. Originally, this entire fusion was going to be Altaria and Cosmog, but everyone has pretty much taken advantage of poor Cosmog and made a fusion with it, mostly reflecting its color palette 
and Altaria was no exception. I couldn't think of anything to do differently with that, so I decided to go ahead and change Cosmog into Lunala, since I love that Pokemon so much that I bought both Pokemon Moon and Ultra Moon, which now that I think about it, I could have just bought Ultra Moon. Oh well. In terms of color and design, I think this actually turned out really nice. What works for me especially is Lunala's coloring, and the fact that the Galaxy Void gives some room for creative freedom in something like Altaria's Clouds made for a nice effect. I think the only thing that looks kinda silly is Lunala's headgear in this fusion. It doesn't really work for Altaria, I think, but I feared that if I didn't add it, then it would just be an Altaria with alternate coloring. And like I said before, that's just no fun if it's just an alternate color. I mean, anybody can just recolor a Pokemon. I didn't want to do that. So here we have this Altaria <laughs> that has a silly piece of headgear on its head, but that's okay, I guess. I couldn't really work the diamonds in Lunala's design, so I just wanted to add some golden diamond speckles into the clouds, maybe to make up for it. I don't know, if I succeeded, let me know. I probably didn't succeed, but hey, that's okay, right? Right? So overall, I thought these came out pretty okay. It was a fun experience, and who knows, maybe this is the beginning of a new series. Maybe next time I'll do three fusions instead of five, because this video took way longer than I expected. That's probably thanks to four minutes of doing a lucky bag video, but meh. Maybe someday if I get multiple bags, I'll do a video centered around it. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Do you want to see more videos like this for me? Which was your favorite fusion? If you have a suggestion, let me know. Also, don't forget to like this video, share it with someone you think would enjoy it, and now here's some more self-promotion from my past self. Oh wow, you made it to the end of the video! Congratulations! Well, if you enjoyed that and want to help support me, you can do a one-time coffee donation, or you can support me monthly on Patreon. I recently blew off at least a year's worth of dust on that thing and spruce it up a little. There are only three tiers on there. The $1 Lucky Dragon Egg will allow you to have access to the polls for exclusive video topics, and you'll get to see some of the final illustrations I've created before I upload a video. The $5 Golden Dragon Egg will allow you to see the work in progress shots I don't post to my usual social media such as Twitter, and you'll get access to the previous rewards. And finally, of course, the $10 Cosmic Rainbow Dragon Egg tier will allow early access to future videos, and, and, you'll be given a shout out at the end of the video for the Patreon credits. Right now, by the time of this video, there's no one to shout out, but if you ever feel like becoming a Patreon, there's a link in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye!